Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Heinrich and I'm the Real Nuclear Physicist. Today I will be taking a look at how sunlight proves reality. The video in question today comes from a channel called Anthony Bear and he thinks that sunlight proves we're on a flat earth. Let's see where he goes wrong. Okay, I just want to make a quick video called Sunlight Proves Reality. Okay, so somebody will show me a drawing like this. They'll say, okay, look at the huge sun. It's way bigger than the earth. And then they'll <laughs> triangulate it down to the earth and say, oh, look, you can see around the corner. So the sun's much bigger than the earth. <laughs> Let's see if that's possible in reality. Well, if someone showed you a drawing and say the sun is way bigger than the earth, they are correct. Um, that drawing, not to scale, I mean, look at the actual size of the Earth compared to the Sun. Now that's tiny, in fact you can barely see the Earth. So, yes, the Sun is much bigger than the Earth. Okay, so here's the Sun, twice as big as the Earth. And, um, as you can see, you can see around the corner, here's the corner, you can see around the corner, no problem because the sun is way bigger than the earth. But watch what perspective does. Let's move it down, farther down. Well, once again, yes, the sun is bigger than the earth, but the sun isn't twice as big as the earth. It's much larger. So your scale representation there is completely off. Um, and also, the sun isn't that close to the earth. So the sun is about eight light minutes away from the earth. So that's not what you're representing there. Okay, so there's our big sun down there. We're about 40 feet away. And uh, look, now we got a solid line. So, and if you come back here, perspectively, the sun is smaller than the earth now. So it can't light up the back of the globe or the, or the side of the globe. Well, perspectively, yes, the sun lights up half of the globe. Um, in fact, it always lights up half of the globe. Uh, the only reason in that closer image you showed that you, it seemed like you can see more of the backside of the Earth was due to reflections. Um, in reality, if you have a sphere illuminated from a large distance, you will only be able to see half of the sphere, or only half of the sphere would be in the light side and the other half, the dark side. Fun fact, that's where night and day comes from. Because even though the sun is bigger down there, it's still smaller perspectively. So you can't, it can't light up the side of the globe anymore, obviously. Technically it is lighting up the side of the globe. In fact, the day and night line that you show on that that model you have there is on the side of the globe and if I'm not mistaken the front part is lit up and the back part isn't. And once again the scale of our solar system means the sun's light is coming in parallel. That's why you won't be able to see it when you're on the dark side of the earth or like normal people call it when it's night time. Perspectively the sun is small that's why the Eratosthenes experiment doesn't prove the Earth is a ball. The sun is, per is perspectively small, so the sun rays can't be parallel. In fact, Eratosthenes experiment only works on a flat Earth. The angle measured at Alexandria would be much larger on a flat Earth than it was actually measured. And the sun might seem small due to perspective, but because it's so immensely far away, the light from the sun, in fact, do come parallel towards the earth. You, you can't just come over to the drawing and say, wow, look, the sun, look how big the sun is, and just draw a bunch of parallel lines and say, yeah, the sun's rays are parallel. That doesn't make any sense, because perspectively, the sun's puny. But that's not what we're doing. We're not going up to a drawing and say, just these few parallel lines in the middle 
go towards the earth. I challenge you, make the sun bigger and the earth further away. And then instead of drawing from the edges of the sun, draw light shining out in all directions. And you'll see the light coming from the sun towards the earth, the angle of deviation from them are so little that in fact we might as well say they are parallel. Here's a real life example. The sun is puny in the sky and you can see that the rays are not parallel. The sun only seems puny in the sky because it's, once again, far away. And the lines don't seem parallel because you're facing towards the sun. Look at these train tracks. There's no arguing that to say that they aren't parallel because if they weren't parallel, the train wouldn't be able to ride on them. But from our perspective, they vanish into the distance and seem like they're not parallel. Once again, you're not making a great argument. So let's see if you can step up your game. Here's another problem for the GLOW model. During the 2017 solar eclipse, the, supposedly the moon casted a 70 mile wide shadow on the Earth. Okay, here's our drawing from NASA explaining how it happens. And again, the sun is going around the corner on the Earth. Here's two red lines showing what I'm talking about. The sun would have to go around the corner. We already know, due to perspective on our model, the sun can't shine around the corner. When working with light and shadows, you get an umbra and a penumbra. During a solar eclipse, the dark part that you see is the umbra. Now the umbra means that all the light is obscured from the light source. Whereas the penumbra, the part outside of the dark spot, has reflected light forming part of it. Which is why it's not dark, because there's light. There's two cases when working with the umbra. The first one is you have a small object with a large light source that's far away. Then you'll have an umbra smaller than the object. If you have a small light source, close to the object that's, being, that's obscuring the light source, you'll have a big umbra. Now, once again, sun is big, it's very far, and that's why we have a small umbra. The shadow is roughly 70 miles wide on the ground. That means the moon can't be bigger than 70 miles. Because one of the laws of shadows is you can't cast a shadow smaller than the object that's casting it. The moon is supposed to be 2,000 miles wide. So there's a problem for the globe, another problem. Um, there's no physical law describing shadows, so there's no laws of shadows. But no, you're wrong. You can cast a shadow smaller than your object because the shadow in reference, once again, is the umbra. Um, sure, the penumbra, including the umbra, will never be smaller than the object, but with solar eclipses, the umbra is the part that we see, and that's why it's smaller than the object. Now, before you get all huffy-puffy, let me see your experiment with the, with the single light source, perspectively smaller than the object, cast a shadow smaller than the object. You will see that's not possible. Do an experiment. Test it. Go outside, take a ball, and circle it on a piece of cardboard or paper and move the ball further and further away from that paper. You'll see a light shadow, which is your penumbra, and you'll see a dark shadow, which is your umbra. And that dark shadow will shrink as the ball moves further away. If you take time to study eclipses, you'll find out that the, the moon is probably not even causing the eclipse. Very wild claim to say that the moon does not cause the eclipse. And usually if you make a claim like that, you should have something to replace the theory that you're trying to disprove. Um, but in reality, it is the moon causing the eclipse. Um, there's absolutely nothing else that, that can cause an eclipse. Another problem for the globe is daylight. Now you can pick any day you want. And I, I put the daylight map side by side with the globe and check it out. 
you see this shiny spot and the sun here they line up pretty good so where my finger is right here that should be the day and night line now let's crank it over and take a look now here's where the terminator line should be now look how much more light is past the terminator line in reality so that's another problem for the globe and you can see on our model it's not possible one thing that flat earthers have taught me is i can't trust you because you lie now i can't see where you put your finger down or in fact if it is at the terminator so before you can use this as evidence redo the experiment with some different camera angles to show that you are actually putting your finger on the terminator this was a great example of how sunlight does not prove we're on a flat earth um, in fact it proves we're on a sphere so let's see if they can come up with something else if you enjoyed this video Please like and subscribe and stick around for the next one. See you then.